topic we're going to talk about now is sampling and bias. And we've got two goals. One goal is to create a common vocabulary. We're going to define some terms that will allow us to talk about statistics and have a common understanding of, of what we're, we're trying to do. Um, and the other goal is to give us a, a, a framework for the course. Um, so a vocabulary, but also a framework. Um, and I think this will help us think about studies that we've already seen, applied studies, um, and understand better how they fit into the sorts of things that we are learning about. So the first thing we're going to do is literally listen definitions, right? That's what we have to do. We can't start talking until we have, again, some common terms. The first definition I'm going to list is a unit. A unit is literally the thing you're studying, the object about, you wish, uh, about which you wish to learn something. So I'll write thing we are studying. And most of the time, the unit is the row in your data set. Now, not all data sets are rectangular spreadsheets with rows and columns, but a lot of them are, and a lot of the familiar ones right now are. Um, so a unit's the thing we're studying, but it's also often a row in your data set. That's often true. So whatever your rectangular data set is, if it's rectangular, probably whatever the row is, is the unit. So um, this is maybe better explained with some examples. So for example, um, if I were to survey Wellesley students about remote learning and how they feel about remote learning, the unit in my data set or my analysis would be people, individual people, and they happen to be Wellesley students, but they are human beings, they're people. Suppose what I'm interested in instead is the average household income of people in the United States, right? Well, it's the average income by household, right? So I would need to collect income for each household. So in that case, the unit of analysis would not be a person, rather it would be a household. Of course, our studies don't have to be about people. You might be working in a lab where you're doing experiments on mice and each row in your data set represents a different mouse. Um, or you might be doing a study, and again, there are people at Wellesley who do this study, um, where you collect samples of soil from different places in a certain area, for example, our campus, um, and study the levels of different uh, substances, substances in, those, um, in those soil samples. And so, right, it might literally be bags of dirt that arose in your data set, right? Any of those things could be examples of a unit. So it's a really simple concept, but you do need to know what your unit of analysis is, right? Like if you're studying income and you have a data set, you better know whether the rows in the data set are people or households. So we've got one term defined. The next um, idea we're gonna define is the target population. Target population. The target population is the set of units you'd like to learn about. The set of units of interest. So I'll write set of units um, you'd like to learn about. So this is gonna help us understand what our goal is. If I am interested in um, finding out how Wellesley students feel about remote learning, my target population will consist of all people who are current Wellesley students, right? It's not all people ever in the world, it's all people who are current Wellesley students. If I'm interested in the average household income um, in the US, then the target population is all households in the US. If I am studying mice, maybe it's all mice of a certain type. If I'm studying um, bags of dirt, maybe it's all possible bags of dirt from the Wellesley campus. So for example, again, all Wellesley students or all US households, et cetera, right? But note that defining a unit is not enough to understand the goal of our study. Um, because saying that the units of analysis are people does not tell you that the people I'm trying to study are Wellesley students. And saying that the, the rows in my data set are households does not tell me that I'm interested specifically in households that are in the US. Um, so not all units that you could possibly think of are gonna be in your target population. So now we've got the most important um, term so far, but there's only been three so far. Really, this is one of the most important concepts in the course. If I press really hard with my Apple Pen, it's going to be really bold. See? The S demand. What is the S demand? The S demand is a number. Okay, it's a number. And it's a number 
that we wish we knew. In fact, the fact that we don't know the S demand is the whole problem. The S demand is the number that we wish we knew in order to answer the research question. A number that we wish we knew in order to answer the research question. If I knew the S demand, I would be done. So for example, if I'm interested in how Wellesley students feel about remote learning, and I actually had um, an answer from every single Wellesley student, um, whether it may be a rating of remote learning um, on a scale from one to 10, then I could take the ratings from all of those Wellesley students and calculate their mean and literally find out the average opinion of Wellesley students um, about remote learning. If I'm interested in the average household income in the US, suppose I had a list of every household in the US and their incomes, I could take the mean or median of that, and that would literally be the average household income. That would be the answer to my research question, right? If my research question is, what's the average income in the US? Then calculating that number using the information from every single US household would be the answer to my research question. Now, hopefully, as I'm saying this, you're starting to see that it's not always going to be feasible or even usually feasible to just calculate that as demand, right? So let's keep moving here. Suppose I'm interested in, um, I don't know, how much mice weigh after you feed them a certain diet. Am I going to be able to feed this certain diet to every single mouse in the world? No, nope, right? Every mouse who ever lived? Nope, definitely I can't do that. Suppose I'm interested in the um, levels of some substance in samples of soil from the Wellesley College campus. Right? Am I going to be able to dig up every single soil sample possible from the Wellesley College campus and test it? Uh, nope, right? Because then we would have no campus. We would just have run over the campus with a bulldozer. So that would not work very well. So that's what an S demand is. If you did have all the units in the target population, though, you could just go straight to calculating the S demand. Right, you could just go straight to calculating the S demand. So let's con let's let's define one more term, and then we'll we'll go back to um, what I just said here. So the next thing I'm going to define is sampling. Sampling. Okay. Sampling is the link between your target population and the data that you actually have. It's the process by which certain units end up in your data set, hopefully from the target population. Again, it's the link between your target population and the data that you have. Typically, typically you only have access to a data set that is a subset of the target population, right? So the S demand is unknown if we don't actually have the whole target population, right? So our data set, which is the result of sampling from our target population, is going to be how we estimate our S demand. In this class, we're going to differentiate between the terms S demand and estimate. Estimating is something you do. S demand is the number we wish we knew in order to answer our research question. Okay, so we said that the S demand, um, let's say it this way, the S demand could be just calculated, could be calculated in a straightforward way if we actually had data on all the units in our target population. if we had data and every unit in the target population. So why don't we just do that? Why don't we gather data on every unit in the target population? Well, I've already given you one example where it's clear we can't always do that, right? We can't dig up the entire Wellesley campus in order to learn about um, the soil on the Wellesley campus. But let's think about people. Right, so suppose I'm interested um, in learning about 
all Wellesley students, right? Or a different target population, all US households. What's the name for trying to collect information from all of the units in the target population? Think about that for a second. It's a term you've heard before. What is the name for trying to collect information from all the units in the target population? So the name for that is a census. And what's the most famous census? The census, right? The US census is the most famous census, um, at least in the US. So a census is an attempt to collect information from all units in the target population. Why would anybody do that? Because if you had a census that was successful, if you actually did collect information from all the units in the target population, then you could calculate your estimate and you'd be done. You'd have answered your research question. If we actually contacted every single Wellesley student and asked her to rate um, remote learning, then we could calculate the average rating and we would be done. That would be the answer to our research question. But is that really gonna work? Is that practically realistic? Right, so our example here is the US Census. So with the US Census in mind, what are the problems? What's gonna go wrong? I think you know some of them, right? If you set out to collect information on every unit in the target population, your resources are gonna be spread pretty thin. So that's one thing right there. A census is resource heavy. It's expensive, it's hard, it takes time. And because it's expensive and it's hard and it takes time, you're gonna miss certain units. So let's think about, um, Think about the US population. If you try to do the census and you try to calculate or collect information from every household, who are you going to miss? There's certain people who are harder to find, right? So, what do they do? They mail um, envelopes to houses. They're doing that um, in, in spring 2020, right? Um, if you are homeless, it is going to be harder to find you, right? It is harder to collect census information for people who are homeless. Um, who else? If you don't want to answer the census, it's going to be harder to include you. So who doesn't want to answer, answer? Well, for example, undocumented immigrants don't want to answer sometimes, um, right? We do have laws about um, whether the census is allowed to share its um, information with other, uh, other parts of the government, but for good reason, um, not everybody trusts that, right? So one of the problems with the census is that because it's so resource heavy, um, you are gonna have a lot of trouble getting everybody and the people you miss are gonna be systematically different from the people that you collect data on. So a census is gonna miss um, certain subgroups in a systematic way, right? It's a systematic part that's, that's the biggest issue there. So for example, people who are homeless, people who are undocumented, and there are lots of other examples of people. College students, right, are harder to find. Um, and someone who's lived in the same home for 50 years, right? So the issue is if you try to collect a census, if you try to do a census, you're actually worse off than if you used all your resources to try to collect a representative subset of the data. So what we'll be talking about um, as we continue with our definitions, but also for much of this course, is how you go about collecting and then analyzing data that is purposefully a subset of the target population. But we have to mention this idea that you could just try to get everybody, right? You could try to talk to every Wellesley student. You could try to find every household. You can't really try to find every mouse and you can't dig up all the dirt on the Wellesley College campus. Um, but if you did, that would be a census.